Hi everyone, this is Sam. Thank you for tuning in to Yoga with Touchstone Climbing. This class is Asana Breakdown, which is a shorter practice where we focus most of our energy, if not all of it, on one pose by talking about it, prepping for it um, in as much of a way as we can for a short period of time, and then breaking down the pose. And hopefully working out of this posture being um, elusive, if it is, um, and growing out of whatever challenges that we're experiencing with it. So today's practice is focused on Shirsasana, which is the Sanskrit name for headstand. And we're gonna play around with headstand one and two. So this is really more like a demonstrative class. We're gonna move um, so that we are warm, but the hope is that we also uh, just keep in mind that, especially as we get into a lot of these more, let's call them complicated poses, this one, Shirsasana in particular, that we are, you know, warmed up, maybe, uh, maybe that this allows us to understand the pose, play around with it so that when it pops up in a class and if it doesn't get a lot of time and it's you know thrown in like as an option that this particular shorter practice can support uh, support an understanding of that especially since we can't be together in person and in those classes um, I know I would be holding demonstrations for those we'd have more time so Let's, um, let's bridge the gap in that with this asana breakdown class and learn about shirsasana and we'll prepare for it, of course. Um, but just listen to your body for sure. And if it doesn't feel right to stand on your head, um, feel free to just watch and kind of play around with learning um, without doing it per se. And you can always come back to this. Okay, so things that you may want for this class, you might want a blanket. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with my head on the mat on top of a hard surface, a surface. You want your surface to be a little bit steadier. So if it's really, really cushiony, that might not actually be very stable. So something to think about if you do have a blanket, right, folded thin, and just something to remember when you're standing on your head is that we don't normally stand on our head. So the the sensation of like putting your uh, weight on the head and the impact of the ground um, might not feel super comfortable, um, which may or may not mean that something is wrong. So just again, something to think about. Besides a blanket, uh, a block or a book may be helpful for this practice too. And then you may want a wall. I've got a wall behind me um, and a wall might be comfortable for you as you start to work your way into the headstand, maybe getting your feet up off the floor, if that's what you choose to do, which you do not have to, right? So a wall can be super, super helpful for our class today. All right, let's go ahead and give ourselves a moment to just drop in and tune in and prepare ourselves for practice with some centering and breath. So if you're already in a comfortable seat, great. If you're not, please make your way into one. And we'll begin by resting the hands over the knees, palms facing up or down. <sighs> Settling into our seat while lifting the spine up as tall as possible toward the crown of the head, out of the hips. Notice the shoulders and draw them back over the hips. Notice the weight of the head and Make the chin parallel to the ground with the ears gently pulled back. Eyes are closed, but the face is relaxed and the breath is moving in and out of the nose. Settle the body. Higher awareness into this space. And the intention for our practice here, aside from learning, right? This is what this breakdown class is all about. The intention or the theme, if you will, is really to play, right? Headstands 
are considered a playful pose. They can be a playful pose. They can also be a lot of other things that we experience. So when we're moving today, remember that all of this is for play, which means that you know there's no right or wrong. There's no supposed to or should. We're really just here to play around in our bodies and kind of celebrate the ability to move. Let's draw the palms together in front of the heart. Open the chest and begin our practice with the sound of one ohm. Exhale all of the breath out of the nose. Inhale through the nose. Gently release the hands, blink the eyes open. Um, let's stay in our seat for just a moment and um, thread your right arm behind your back. Let it rest there. And lower the left ear toward the left shoulder. We're not trying to go super far. You might immediately feel the stretch on the right side of the neck. You might not feel anything and that's okay. okay if you'd like to kind of play around with the stretch here, uh, you can take your gaze down toward your left thigh. You can also take your gaze up toward the sky. Just make sure you're not leaning your head back. Right? We're not t taking the neck all the way back and we're not dropping the chin down. There's more of a rotation taking place. And then lift your head, send your right hand onto the right knee and then switch your arms. So think of your spine being as long as possible, right? Imagine your tailbone and then your spinal cord going straight up, even though it's curvy, right? Imagine uh, an imaginary line going about straight up. Keep that line and just lower the right ear toward the right shoulder. Don't worry about your ear and your shoulder touching. doesn't matter. Check back in with your breath. Make sure it's still flowing in and out of the nose. We'll keep that as much as we can. Maybe you're tipping your gaze toward the sky. Maybe you're tipping your gaze down toward the right thigh. Maybe you're going back and forth. And let's inhale, lifting the head and staying in our seat. Let's reach the right arm up, bend the right elbow so that your right hand is behind the back of your neck. And then use your left hand to grab onto your right elbow. Now, if this does not happen, you can send your right elbow wider. Maybe it's already there and you'll just try to grab onto the back of your right forearm, perhaps. If you have your elbow in your hand, feel free to guide your elbow in as much as feels right toward the midline. Lean your head like evenly back. So if your chin were on like a platform and you were sliding it straight back, that action Okay, the forearm and the head are energetically pressing into each other. And as you come up, you might notice that your ribs are popping up. Go ahead and drop them back down. Keep rooting the tailbone into the ground underneath you. And then gently release. Take a moment. You might want to shake out your arms, wiggle out your fingers, and then we'll switch sides. Okay, right hand to the left elbow, if that feels appropriate. All right, the left elbow may not be within reach, which means that the left elbow is wider. So again, just wanna demonstrate that that might be where you are. Start to press the back of your skull into your forearm while dropping the bottom ribs. And breathing to expand the ribs as you inhale and feel them come back together as you exhale. Let's gently release, shake out whatever you need to. And we're gonna come up out of our seat, set up in a table pose. And we're gonna move with our shoulders here and isolate them. So once you set up your table, shoulders over the wrists, knees underneath the hips, go ahead and spin the first fingers forward, plant down through both hands and firm your belly. 
Okay, from your belly. If you have a block, if you're working with, uh, with a block at home, you can place the block in between your thighs. And all this does is when you squeeze into it, it just keeps things more contracted and stable around the hip space. Okay, because we just want to move the shoulders here. So the arms are going to stay straight. And with the arms straight, I'm going to shrug my shoulders onto the back of my body which is gonna give me movement in the spine. Just make sure that you're not bowing out in the middle of the back and sticking your butt out. So not a cow pose. Okay, so just drawing the shoulder blades in. And then we're gonna take the shoulders toward the ears. Arms are still straight. And then I'm gonna push the shoulders off of my back, protracting. And then I'll take the shoulder blades toward the hips, depressing and then start over, shoulder blades hug in. This is retraction, check in with your elbows, make sure they're not bending. Shoulders toward the ears, press the shoulders off of your back by pushing the hands down, drag the shoulder blades toward the hips, and then we'll go the opposite direction. Take the shoulder blades toward your ears, pinch them in toward each other as much as you can, drag the shoulder blades toward your hips, push into the ground, shoulder blades off the back. One more time. Shoulder blades towards your ears. Shoulder blades in toward each other. Be as articulate as you can be. Take the shoulder blades back as much as you can. Push the shoulder blades off of your back, hands into the ground. And then after a couple of those in each direction, let's come down onto the forearms. Elbows just underneath your shoulders. Uh, either the palms are in prayer or you can interlace your fingers. And when you do that, I like to tuck in the bottom pinky. You'll hear me say the, that a lot if you take class with me often. Tuck the bottom pinky underneath so that you're not smashing it, if you're interlacing the fingers. Okay, ground down into your forearms. Steady your shoulder blades onto your back by pinching them slightly in, not quite as much as we did a second ago. I like to keep the toes tucked. And then I'm gonna step the ball of the right foot back, keep the kneecap facing the ground. On an inhale, lift the right heel up about as high as the hip. Pause here, puff up the back of the body, fill with breath. Exhale, slowly draw the right knee forward towards your nose, rounding your back, letting the head go. Inhale, slowly send your right leg back. Push your heel and the ball of your foot away from you. Look slightly forward. Exhale, draw your knee forward, contract the core, round the back. Inhale, start to lengthen, reach the right heel behind you, look slightly forward. Exhale one more time, right knee forward, rounding the back. Go slow as you inhale and as you stretch out. And then exhale, lower the right knee down, tuck your toes and switch sides. A slight engagement of your shoulder blades onto your back. And with the left toes down on the ground behind you, this kind of facilitates in keeping the kneecap facing the ground. That way we're not tipping over onto the right side. So just for a little, a little bit of uh, like an alignment tip. Okay, so when you lift the left heel, do your best to keep that alignment. Curl your toes forward. Push down, draw the shoulder blades back. Take a breath. Exhale, contract the belly, knee toward the nose, round your back. Inhale, stretch the left leg back, push. Imagine pushing into a wall as you lengthen. Exhale, knee forward, press down. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw in and round your back. Inhale, slowly and extend. As you exhale, lower the left knee down to the ground. Pause here, come back up onto your hands. Hands are steady. Let out your next breath and with your next inhale, just take a cow pose now. Open up the front of the body. Look up, lift your hips and as you exhale out of the nose, lift your belly round your back. Inhale, start to make your way to a flat back. Tuck the toes, lift your knees up and back. Set up a down dog. Looking forward, step the right foot up next to your right thumb. Come up high onto the tips of your fingers. Set the right knee over your heel and lift your left heel high. We're gonna keep the gaze forward beyond the front of the mat. Ne neck is really long here. Check in to feel that you're not looking up, so you can't really see the wall in front of you or whatever's in front of you. Okay, puff up your back with a breath in. Exhale, bend the back knee, step forward into a fold, soften the knees, maybe bend them more to touch the ground and let the weight of your head go. 
evenly pressing the weight through your heels and the balls of the feet. Placing the hands onto the shins, inhale, come up halfway and plug the shoulder blades onto your back. Exhale and fold. Two more of those, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, top of the head forward. Exhale, fold. Slide the fingertips back next to the heel. Step the right foot back. Set up a long lunge. And when you get into your lunge, check in to see that your feet are about as wide as the hips. Left knee over the heel, right heel lifted high. And the fingertips are really light. So that helps us really get into our legs more. You push into the ground, hug the inner thighs in, and roll the chest open. One more breath. Begin to plant your palms. Step your left foot back. Pause in downward facing dog. Breathing in and out of the nose. Feel for the sides of your body to be long, so that's the space between your hips and your armpits. And one at a time, or at the same time, lower your forearms down to the ground, elbows under the shoulders. Now you might want to bend your knees and or walk your feet more forward by a few inches. And then a couple of things here. The hands can be separated in what is called dolphin pose, right? Wrists in line with your shoulders, palms flat down to the ground. You also have the option of bringing the hands in toward each other. This is a pretty challenging pose for a lot of us. If your shoulders are tight and maybe your hamstrings, you can bring your hands together in that prayer or interlaced finger position. Head is lifted from the ground. Your knees bending more to pull the hips back may be helpful. Sides of the body long. We've got two more breaths. Draw the shoulders back, one more breath. Inhale, come up onto your hands. Lift the right leg, take a breath in. And then exhale, step the right foot forward next to your right thumb, lower the back knee down, set it up either underneath your hip or behind your hip, and either tuck your toes or point them, whichever feels best. Please climb your hands up onto your right thigh. And then using your hands around your right thigh, gently twist to the right, driving your left knee down, Relaxing through your shoulders, still breathing in and out of the nose. Let's use an inhale to come back to the middle, sweep both arms up. At the top, bend your elbows and clasp opposite elbows here, lower the bottom ribs down. Tailbone toward the ground as you lengthen the thighs. And then release both hands, place the fingertips down, lift up the back knee, downward facing dog, take a breath. And then we'll switch sides. When you're ready, send your left foot forward next to your left thumb. Keep the feet about as wide as your hips. Center the weight of the left knee over the heel and then lower the right knee down. This also might be a good place for your blanket if you have it. Okay, back toes tucked or pointed. Press into the earth, come up onto your left thigh, and just gently use your hands. We're not pulling too much, we're gonna twist to the left. And feel for the energy in your feet, even the toes of your back foot, the ball of your back foot. Feel everything pressing down, steadying the foundation. And notice your breath. Don't worry about how deep the pose is. It really doesn't matter. And on your next inhale, we'll come back to the middle. Keep the legs engaged. Reach your arms up. Clasp opposite elbows or forearms. Imagine your inner thigh is trying to pull toward each other to feel the engagement in that space. Draw the navel in. And stretch from the hips up towards your armpits, from your hips up toward the top of the head, and from your hips into your legs, down to your feet. And then we'll gently release the hands, lift the back knee, and step back to downward facing dog. Look forward in between the thumbs. Spread the fingers, spread the toes. 
Inhale, shift to plank pose, shoulders over the wrists. Maybe you need to walk the feet back, lift the heels high. Option to lower the knees. We're gonna take a big breath. And as you exhale, contract the shoulder blades on the back of the body, hug the elbows in, lower down, pause halfway, or use your knees or the mat, and then lower all the way down. Point your toes back, inhale, gently lift your heart. Exhale, tuck the toes, press down into the ground. Let's go to down dog. And then look at the tips of your pinkies side to side. We're gonna step the right foot up first to the outside of the right pinky. Bend the back knee and step your left foot up toward the outside of your left pinky and you may need to take a moment to adjust. Spin the heels in slightly so the toes and the knees point out and then check in to see that they're pointing out in about the same direction. Okay, lower your hips down as you bend your knees deeply. Option to use your block and place it on either the middle setting or the lowest setting to just support the weight of your hips. Anchor your feet, elbows inside the knees. Then you're gonna push your knees in and press your elbows out simultane simultaneously, keeping the length of the spine. So, all right, feeling for this curve at the back of the neck, which is a natural curve. We want that to stay like a part, a healthy part of our spine, right? So generally we don't take the chin down and we're also not looking up. And when we do this, right, you can hear if I tip my head back, it's a little bit harder to breathe even. And I'm really deeply contracted at the back of the neck. That's um, a form of compressing in the, in the cervical spine, right? But um, that could work for some people to be in that position and to put weight on that position. But as we start to think about headstand, Right, just kind of feeling for this neck space to be pretty soft. Okay, we're gonna make our way out of the pose. Look down, place your hands, lift your hips, and come back into a forward fold. Align the feet. And then spread the toes apart, bend your knees, lift your heels, use your hands to lower your hips. Set your seat up on the mat and then use your fingertips on either side of your hips to rock back slightly, bring your feet together and come into a uh, variation of boat pose. Let's keep the knees bent here. And we're just gonna work the core a little bit. Okay, so here, let's draw the knees in all the way. Try to relax your shoulders and pull them in toward each other. I was totally rounding my back. Take a big breath in. And then let out the exhale. And we're gonna inhale and lengthen and lean back. Exhale and come in. Inhale. And exhale. Got three more. It might feel good to do this with or without your hands. You can try doing it without your hands. Finding a breath that feels steady for you or really just looking to warm up the front chain of the body just like everything in front of you. And then once you're done with all five, we're gonna relax out of that. And I hope we're pretty warm. There's of course so much more that we can and probably would do in a long yoga class. If we're talking 60, 75, 90 minutes. But the purpose of this is to feel some sort of warmth so that we can play around with these poses or take a moment to learn about them. Um, and if, again, it pops up in a longer asana practice, we have um, an opportunity to come to this video, maybe like after a class where it's popped up too, you can just come to this video and, and then work on it. Okay, so Shir Sasana, two versions. Um, one will be easier for some of us, one will be easier for um, one, one will be easier and one will be harder, and that varies between people, is what, what I was trying to say. So Shirasasana 2 is the first one that I'm going to teach, and that is tripod headstand. And it's called tripod headstand because there, well, my understanding is that there are three points um, of the foundation of the headstand. All right, so the hands and then the head. Now the hands are gonna be set up in about the same alignment that you would have them for your plank, table pose, a crow pose, 
and that is wrists about outer shoulder width distance apart, give or take, about outer shoulder width distance apart. First fingers are forward. Okay, the hands, two hands on the mat, and then the top of the head goes down. Now before I teach into the pose, I'm gonna demonstrate the pose, and then, and then we'll go into it more. Okay, so the top of the head goes down. You'll notice that as soon as the top of the head goes down, right, there's, there's gonna be a curve at the back of the neck that I'm gonna maintain. And from here, options to come up here this way. You don't have to put your knees on your triceps, but you can. And you can use them on the way down. You can also choose not to. And if you wanna do this with a wall behind your back, you can, and it might feel good to like kick up. You can totally do that, and there's something behind you that's going to protect, right, the space behind your body. Now let's say, Lots of breaking down for this pose. Let's say that you're gonna use the wall. For this variation, the top of the head would go down right behind the wall, or right in front of the wall. Right, you'd put your head down about here, give yourself maybe like an inch. And then um, that way the wall is right behind your back and there's a lot less of a tendency for your body to kind of get wiggly. So that would be where you place your head. Now if you're doing this in the middle of the room, right, that doesn't, Technically, it doesn't matter where your head goes down. But now let's talk about the foundation of this pose. The top of the head, which is a very specific spot, right? We want to be specific because we're putting weight on the top of the head and we want to make sure that the upper spine is in its healthiest place, generally speaking, especially if we're not used to doing this. So the top of the head is about the same place that you would put a block or a book to balance on your head. So you can practice doing that and use your prop for this. And this is kind of like a nice way to experience this alignment. And then once you have that for Shirsasana 2, once you plant your hands, and those are all set up, right? Now if your hands are all set, you're going to go ahead and move yourself forward with your knees, don't move the hands, and you're gonna bow down and place the top of the head down on the mat about eight to 10 inches-ish in front of your hands. So there's a lot of space between my head and the tips of the fingers, and I can see all 10 of the fingers without moving my head. And what that does is it allows me to find that position where the elbows are on top of the wrists and the neck, and the neck is in a really nice position. And then from here, right, if you're here already, tucking the toes, you're going to push into the ground, wrap the forearms in, right? Push into the ground, wrap the forearms in. The hands never leave the ground, the knees will lift. Maybe you stack one knee on top of one tricep. Maybe you follow with the other. Now lift your shoulders up away from the floor and stay here, or maybe you lift up one leg. To me, that's harder than lifting up both legs, but it's gonna be different for everyone. And you're kind of tuning into the same core work that you used when you were in your, in your boat pose, contraction and uh, when you were contracting in and bending the knees in and then stretching the legs out. Right, and that's why we're doing that a little bit more slowly. Okay, so that's Sheer Sasana 2. Maybe that one was e the easier one for you. Right, it involves your arms, which can feel supportive. And something I've noticed is that that one, if your wrists are not necessarily the most cooperative parts of your body, um, and the elbows tend to flare out. Right, there's a lot more awareness that needs to go into really keeping the forearms in. The elbows over the wrists is gonna be uh, the most ideal place for that part of your body when you're doing this, right? And the shoulders, we want them on the back, not hunched. That's going to uh, put us in kind of a, it's gonna put us in a space that we don't really wanna be in over 
long periods of time or repeatedly because that'll be really compressing for the upper spine and that may not feel very comfortable. Okay, so playing around with that, with the wall, without the wall, just kind of playing around with where your foundation is, the top of the head, right? Maybe you're lifting up here, really engaged. Maybe you're floating up. Again, a lot more demonstration going on in this class. And while I'm demonstrating, maybe you're taking notes in your mind and playing around and putting these things into motion. The second version of headstand uh, that commonly pops up in a practice is Shir Sasana 1. Forearms on the ground. And fingertips interlaced. So this is one of the reasons why, right, I like to tuck the bottom pinky under because now I'm going to put all the weight down and I don't want to smush my knuckles. So when you place your forearms down on the ground, I like to line things up. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? But crossing your hands over to your elbows, which we did in our lunge. Once you have your elbows in your hands, you're going to keep them right where they are, open the hands out. Interlace the fingers, tuck the bottom pinky underneath. There are other ways to do this. Prayer hands is something that gets practiced. Some people do this with their hands flat. Okay, for today I'm going to teach this. This is also what you can call like the traditional variation. Now the, the hands are a little bit more on the open side. The thumbs are going to be pressing against the back of the head. From this position, there are a lot of ways to get in and out of these poses, but for now we're just going to take it really simple. Okay, just to break down the pose itself, I'm going to place my head round my upper back, place the top of my head, that same spot, right on the ground inside of my hands. Okay, once I place the top of my head down, I'm going to actively push the forearms in, draw the shoulders up and back, and start lifting the knees. And this may be as far as you go. Right? As you come up to this position, you might find like, whoa, this is as good as I want. This is good. I don't want to go any further. So maybe you stay. Okay, if you're looking to go further, you can tuck your knees into your chest. A lot of shoulders here. You're pulling your shoulder blades back. Maybe your knees tuck in and you pause here. Maybe you float the legs up. I like to really focus on squeezing the legs together, ankles together, spreading the toes, squeezing and firming the glutes. I have no idea if I'm in a perfect line, but it, it's all good. All right, you can use a wall. And maybe you come out by just lowering one foot at a time. Maybe you come out by tucking again. Right, it's really up to you and what you feel comfortable with. And when you play with this one, you might find maybe you already have an experience of this. This one's easier than the other one. Maybe this one is the harder one. Um, in the end, right, I like to come back to the theme. It ultimately doesn't really matter. And all of this is really just a lot to, to feel and experience and play. So as we're moving in and out of these poses, I like to think about listening to the body. If it doesn't feel good, we come out. Um, if it feels like we want to explore further, we can. And um, we are playing with one or both and knowing that there are lots of ways to get in and out of these poses. These are just ways to kind of focus in on them. I'm going to give us like one more minute to try either Shirsasana 1 or Shirsasana 2. Just, to, just for a moment, if we want it, or to kind of play around with setting up their foundation again. And so if you're practicing Shirsasana 2, which is tripod headstand, right, three points down on the ground, um, you can also think of those points as creating like an equilateral tri triangle. That's how, um, that's how we can space things out. Right, remembering it's important what part of the head we place down Whichever one you're taking, right? I'll give us about 20 more seconds. I'm watching the time here. Whichever variation you're taking, playing and making sure that the breath is with you, or maybe rather you're with the breath. And when you're ready to come down one foot at a time, maybe one knee at a time. <sighs> 
it can be a fun change of perspective and very easily if it's not fun at all we don't have to do it <laughs> that's kind of the beauty of the practice okay let's take a child's pose and walk the hands out lower the forehead to the ground Lift your head, walk your hands back so that your forearms are flat. Lift your hips, walk your knees back, and lower your hips, straighten your legs. Line up shoulders over elbows, palms flat to the mat. Point the toes and engage your legs. Now widen your chest, draw the shoulders in and back. Okay, while we're here in Sphinx Pose, it might feel nice to very gently and super slowly lower the chin, Maybe roll the chin to the right shoulder, lean back, look up and over to the left. Take it slow and only go as far as feels right. Chin to left shoulder, over the left collarbone to the center, and then to the right again. Slow, super slow circle. We can credit these to functional range system. We can thank them for their cars. Let's take one more circle to the left. Chin scrapes over the collarbone. Lean the ear back. Look up and over to the right slowly. Chin to right shoulder. Chin over the collarbone to the center. Then look up. Tuck your toes. Press up. One more time. Take a tighter child's pose. Lift your hips. We're just going to lay on our backs for a moment just to slow things down. We feel the back of the head and the back of the body all resting into the mat. When you get there, it might feel good to hug in your knees and rock side to side. Maybe circle your knees. And just let the back of the head stay anchored to the ground. Switch directions in those circles. Open the knees. Grab onto your shins. Happy baby. Or a variation where the feet are together. And then lower the feet. One hand over the belly, one hand over the chest. Close your eyes. Feel your breath filling up into your hands and releasing. No matter what we ended up doing in this practice today, no matter how far we went in this class or any other, Right. The idea is that in these bodies we have the potential to play and that doesn't have to look a certain way. In Sanskrit, the, there's a beautiful word, lila, and it translates to mean divine play. It's the play of the entire universe creating itself at all times. And that, can look, that looks completely different depending on where you're looking. And that's what we've done today. That's what we do all the time in our bodies, minds, and hearts. Let's stretch the legs out, reach the arms overhead, lengthen out, and take a full breath. Exhale out of the nose. And start to bend the knees, roll to one side. Pause just for a moment, and let's keep the eyes closed as we press up to sit. We're going to complete our little practice by bringing the palms together and ending, finishing up, bringing everything full circle in a way. 
taking a moment of acknowledgement and honoring ourselves, each other, and this practice. May we continue to play, no matter what that looks like, and may that allow us to experience more joy, both on and off of the mat. Let's close with the sound of one ohm. Exhale completely out of the nose first. Inhale through the nose. Gently bow your head. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have questions or comments or concerns about anything that we covered today, um, which I'm sure that we'll do again at some point, um, please leave a comment, leave them in the comment section and um, I'll do my best to connect with you. And I will see you in the next one. And I hope that you, um, I hope the next time you see any of these poses that we do in these little breakdown practices, um, that they are a little bit easier to, to work our way into and to, to give ourselves a try at. See you soon.